Alright, so now we're going to solve absolute value equations and inequalities. Uh, to begin with, let's make sure we understand the concept. Alright, so everybody remember what absolute value means. Absolute value of a number means the distance that a number is uh, from zero on the number line. So, on our first equation that we have here, we have the absolute value of x is equal to 2. Now really what this equation is asking us to find is values that we can plug in for x so that when we take the absolute value of it, you get it equal to 2. So we're looking for numbers on the number line whose distance from 0 is 2. Well, there are two of them. 2 and negative 2. Hence there are two solutions to this equation. x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. Take either one of those numbers and plug them in for x up here and you've got a true statement. So now let's move over here to this idea on on the inequality. Now what we're looking for are all numbers whose distance from 0 is less than 2. So here's 2 and here's negative 2. Now do 2 and negative 2, do they have a distance that's less than 2 units from 0? No. But all these numbers in between negative 2 and 2, if you take any one of those numbers in between negative 2 and 2, they will make this a true statement because they all have a distance from 0 that's less than 2 units. And there are an infinite number of them, so we shade. Right? 2 is a parenthesis, negative 2 is a parenthesis because those are not included. So this would be what the graphical representation would look like. Now to write that down here, algebraically, what this thing is saying is all x values between negative 2 and 2. So to write that algebraically, it would look like the following. This says we want all numbers that are greater than negative 2, that would be to the right of negative 2, and at the same time, those numbers have to be less than positive 2, which would be this way. So that would be all numbers between negative 2 and 2. So what I'm doing here is showing you what the, the way the equation or inequality will be expressed, then how that how you can use the graph to help us see what the solutions would be. And then down here in red are the is the algebraic way uh, to write the solutions. So this so now let's do the absolute value of x is greater than two. So now this is asking us to find all numbers uh, whose distance from zero is larger than two. Okay, well there's two and there's negative 2. So what numbers have a distance from 0 that are larger than 2? Well, take any number out in this direction, it certainly has an absolute value that's greater than 2. Right? Take any number larger than 2, its distance from 0 is certainly greater than 2. Also, if you take any number out in this direction, towards negative infinity, right? take any number in either one of those two shaded regions and they will have a distance that's greater than 2. Uh, now, negative 2 and 2 are also parentheses again, so put those in. And so that's what the graphical representation of the solution for the absolute value of x is greater than 2 would look like. Algebraically, it would look like x is less than negative 2, or x is greater than 2. Right? This is the algebraic way to write what we have up here on the number line. So now our goal is we're going to bypass really the the graph here, the number line situation, and we're going to go straight to uh, expressions written down here, excuse me, equations and inequalities written down here in red. All right, so now let's see an example. All right, so the absolute value of 2x minus 3 equals 5. All right, that's an equation. So the only way this is going to be true is if 2x minus 3 was equal to a 5, because if this, if this expression right here is equal to 5, the absolute value of 5 is certainly going to give us 5. Or, this expression 2x minus 3 could be equal to a negative 5, because if this expression inside here is equal to a negative 5, the absolute value of a negative 5 gives you a positive 5. Everybody see that? So we have two separate little equations that we're going to end up solving. So this goes to 2x equals 8, so x is equal to 4. And this goes to 2x equals negative 2, so x equals negative 1. 
So if x is 4, you plug that in, you get 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5, the absolute value of 5 is 5. That's a true statement. If x is negative 1, plug negative 1 in, you get 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 3, which is negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5, that's also true. So there are two solutions to this equation, 4 and negative 1. All right, so now let's try the inequality situation. All right, so the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is uh, less than 5. So we're, we're looking for values for x that will make this expression, 2x minus 3 here, uh, be between negative 5 and positive 5. So when you go down to write the algebraic expression here, you drop off the absolute value bars, and we're saying this expression, 2x minus 3, needs to be between negative 5 and positive 5. And you saw this little compound inequality. So add 3 to all three sides there, and so that's what negative 2 is less than 2x is less than 8. Then divide everything by 2, and we get... So if we take any number between negative 1 and 4 and plug it in up here into our original inequality, you will get a true statement. So the catch is we've got the absolute value of an expression is less than 5, for example. So that means that we're looking for numbers whose distance from 0 is going to be less than 5. And that means all numbers that are between negative 5 and positive 5. So this expression, 2x minus 3, has to be between negative 5 and positive 5, and you write it as such. And then go solve and isolate for x. Right? And then any number between negative 1 and 4 is the solution to this. In fact, we'll go ahead and mark that off. Okay. Now when you've got the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 5, in this case we've got greater than or equal to, now we're looking for numbers whose distance from 0 is larger than 5. Well, that means we have to have numbers that are larger than 5. This expression needs to be larger than 5, but this expression also needs to be less than negative 5, because any number less than negative 5 also has an absolute value that's greater than 5. So I would write it like such. 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 5, or 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 5. Everybody see how that works? If you take any number, if this expression is any number greater than 5, then its absolute value is certainly going to be greater than 5. And if this expression is less than negative 5, then the absolute value of that is certainly going to be greater than 5. All right? So you end up solving these two separate inequalities. So we have 2x is greater than or equal to 8. So x is greater than or equal to 4. And over here we have 2x is less than or equal to negative 2. So x is less than or equal to negative 1. So if you take any number greater than or equal to 4, or any number less than or equal to negative 1, and plug them in for x up here in your original inequality, it will make it a true statement. Everybody see that? Does that all make sense? Okay, so when you have, um, and, and by the way, for all of these, including the equation back here, for all of these, you want to make sure you isolate the absolute value first and get that equal to some number, right? Have the absolute value isolated less than or greater than um, your, your number. And then think about what this equation or this inequality means. And then, therefore, that will help you figure out how to write it, whether it's uh, the expression in between two numbers or whether it's separated up as two separate inequalities. All right, so make sure you see absolute value equations and inequalities part two to uh, finish up uh, a couple more concepts. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.